Hello and welcome to Headcase Games, iPhone development video log number one, where I sit here and talk to you about everything that matters in the world, so you better pay attention. My name is Ron Alpert, I'm an iPhone app developer, I work for Headcase Games, that's my name on the card. We make games for your iPhone, how about that? I have been uh, blogging in the community for probably about a year and a half. I've been using a Blogspot account, like so many other people, charting the course of the production of the games that we've made. And I decided that it was time to step things up and try my hand at a little bit of a video blog, or a video log, or a vlog, or whatever the kids call it these days. So now, here we go. First of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and where I came from. I have been a game developer for going on 13 years now in the larger studios. I've worked for Activision, Sega, Sierra, Vivendi, a lot of other companies that used to exist that may not anymore. They were all merged into what is essentially going to become the one big company sooner or later in about six months. My name is in the credits on games such as Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk, Sexy Moon, oh, I don't that get there. MTX Motor Tracks, Metal Arms, some other games that I've worked on include Pharaoh, Caesar 3 way back in the day, Lords of Magic, and most recently Alpha Protocol, released by Obsidian and Sega. Uh, when I was working at Obsidian, I met a programmer there, and we decided to go off and do our own thing, and that is what you see before you now. All of this. So then, what have we released? We put out two games during the course of our existence. We released a game called iFist, which came out exactly a year and a month ago and uh, that is available for now now for download on your iPhone type in iFist on the App Store and what that game is is it's basically the old the old game Simon um, you have the sequence that the uh, game plays and then you have to repeat it back mixed with rock paper scissors so basically you see the computer throw rock rock paper and then after it finishes a sequence you have to do the opposite of that so it does rock rock paper you would do paper, paper, scissors, and then it would keep on adding to that. It's a little game, it's very simple, but again, it's something small that a programmer and I, just the two of us, could put out in a short amount of time. We'd only worked in big studios with, you know, 30, 50, 100 other people working on a huge project. We wanted to tackle something small just to make sure we got the entire process down. And it went well, and we released that game, and we decided to do another one. Our second game that we released was this guy. That's 180. And that is a puzzle game. It is in the vein of Bejeweled meets Tetris meets a little bit of Bubble Bobble, or Bust a Move, rather, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Anyone that's actually watching this has probably played at least two or three of those games. At least. Our game is different because we've decided to take... We looked at the games that had been done before and what it was being done on the iPhone, but we wanted to do something that would take specific advantage of the touch interface. And without making this sound like a lot of the usual boilerplate, there's a lot you can do with a touch interface that a lot of people aren't even thinking about, and that's why iPhone app development is so interesting. But I will get into that later. For now, I'm going to turn off my speakers because they're buzzing. All right. So, what is going on with 180? What can I tell you about our game? This is sort of our bigger game. Again, like iFist, it's a small simple presentation. It's, it's a good looking game, it's a fun playing game, it's been critically very well received. But it's not something like Grand Theft Auto where you're running around in a 3D world or anything, it's just a simple little puzzle game with 2D graphics. It is designed to appeal to the casual player and the hardcore player, and I think we did a very good job of doing that. We've got several thousand downloads in the couple of months that it's been released. We've got I think about 25,000 downloads at this time, and hopefully we can get a good amount more in the coming future. We have about 10,000 people playing on the Open Faint leaderboards. If that doesn't mean anything to you, that's the online leaderboards that tracks everybody's score in the world and compares it to everybody else and charts all their achievements and things. So that's good. I'm sitting up near the top. I used to be the number one player on the game, which I guess goes without saying when you're the guy that made the game. But I am not the best puzzle game player, and I got knocked off pretty quickly, so I'll, I'll fight my way back up. Anyway, so that's all I have to say for now about 180. There's a hell of a lot more to say to it, but I'm going to try to keep this podcast a little bit short and sweet. I'd like to say a few other things before I sign off, though. What else am I playing on the iPhone? Uh, right now, 
I was alerted that there is a sale on a game called Puzzle Cosmos by the company Ponos. And it was a dollar, down from three or four. Uh, so I grabbed it right away, and I have to say it is a nice game. I recommend it absolutely for a dollar, even for three or four. I know that the value of things is all kind of all over the place right now, but for what it's worth, if you like a game like Luminous, the style of the play and the feel of it and the way that the way that those types of puzzle games work, you'll definitely like this. It's certainly in that in that neighborhood, and you can tell it was very inspired by that. Uh, I like. I like what I guess it's Q Entertainment has done to redefine the puzzle genre with their kind of techno sort of ravey looking styles of puzzle games. I don't think it appeals to everybody, but I think it definitely works for what they've been trying to do in their games and also with this Ponos game. So I would expect based on their history that they will probably be putting out some sort of a free or light version of it in the coming months. You know, don't hold me to it. I have no idea. Is it worth the dollar? Like I said, you be the judge. Look at some videos, but it's it's a fun game. I, I recommend it. What else I've been playing? Um, not very much lately. I'm actually really busy between doing this kind of stuff and actually making the games and talking to people. But, you know, I get in a little bit of play here and there. Um, my favorite game on the iPhone, other than, other than the one that I made, is a game called Drop 7. Now this game, it's been making the rounds for a couple of years now in some form or other. I'm not exactly sure of the history of it. I think it started life as a flash game. Uh, it was a little bit, it was a little bit more enhanced than the stripped down version that we have on the iPhone. But I prefer the stripped down version because the type of the game that it is, it lends itself to very simple gameplay. Although it's extremely complicated, this game. I could spend an hour at least every single day playing it for the rest of my life, I'm sure of that. I have probably have spent at least an hour every day since I've got into it about eight or nine months ago at this point, and it's just very addictive. It's a game that you look at it, the graphics are very simple, there is no flash to it, there is nothing exciting or interesting about it at all. In fact, a bunch of my friends got into Drop 7 a good year and change before I had even looked at it or before I'd heard of it, they, you know, of course I paid attention and I was like, what's everyone all into? And I looked at it and it looked like, it looked like nothing. And I was like, I don't care. Why should I care about this? My girlfriend picked it up. She sat down on the couch for probably about 18 hours straight and just played it and played it and played it. And she's not really a gamer. So that said something to me. Anyway, I ignored it. I checked it out about six months later. I looked at the demo just for the heck of it. And um, I said, okay, I played it for about a minute. And I got it, and I said, all right, this game is good, and then I downloaded it, and it's, I've not been the same since. If you have any question in your mind whether or not this game is worth the money, just ignore that question and just go and buy it. If you are a fan of puzzle games, or if you're a fan of anything logical or thinking or that requires creativity and problem solving, but isn't overly complicated and it doesn't require a lot to get into, this game is for you. Um, it is. It will kind of ask a little bit of you that you are patient, it's not a game where it's going to just instantly be gratifying. You're probably going to have to mess with it for a few days before your brain starts kind of getting around how these types of games work. Not that there's a lot that you can do with it, but just there's a lot of conceptually going on. I guess that's kind of a hard thing to describe here in a video. Law. I'll just leave it up to you. Look at the ratings. You'll see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I downloaded a game called Puzzloop recently. Puzzloop is a very, not a very old game, but it's a good 20 years old, and it's actually the basis of one of my favorite games. Many of you out there know uh, games like Zuma and Luxor. Puzzloop was the original version of where all those came from, the original, I guess, Marble Popper, you would call it. And uh, some Western developers actually saw this game and decided to sort of make it their own and reskin it and change up the rules a little bit and popularize it. And of course, that's why you have games like, like I said, Zuma and Luxor, and then of course, Stone Loose of Jurassic Hill, which have gone on to do very well. But Puzzle was the first one. It looks very aged. Even in its iPhone incarnation, it still doesn't feel like it can measure up to the, the games that have, you know, passed by it. But it's a very fun game. It's a very simple arcade game. Um, my favorite version of it is actually the black and white version on the old Game Boy. The old, old Game Boy. And I know how that sounds, but it just... It, the mechanics of it just were so solid and so figured out. And the people that made that game were 
they were just were spot on with whatever that Tetris guy was smoking. They were smoking it as well. So I recommend checking out Puzzloop. If you if you are down with anything else that I've said and interested in any, any of the other games that you've heard me that you've heard me talk about now or seen me write about in the past, then I think you'll enjoy this. I think it's it's hard to say. I haven't checked out how much it costs. It's usually going between a dollar to three or four. Uh, I can say that most people probably aren't going to be willing to pay seven or eight, which is what they've traditionally been asking for. But again, check out the light version and see if it's for you. I like it. It's a fun game. It's got nice polish. Um, what else am I playing? That's it, really. I don't really have too much time otherwise. I have, a, of course, all the usual consoles, PlayStation 3, 360, and the Wii, and they're all sitting there looking at me, gathering dust. I downloaded the Scott Pilgrim uh, demo on the PSN recently, and that was okay. I think I had some high expectations for it based on the style of the gameplay and the style of the art. And while it is a fun game and it looks cool, I think based on what I've heard about it, it doesn't demo very well. And I can second that opinion. It was just like, it's it's okay, but going back and playing an actual 16-bit side-scrolling beat-em-up and then playing that, something got lost in, in the translation. But a lot of people say that the demo doesn't really do it as much justice as if you actually buy the game. I've seen that happen before. The same thing happened with me when I first played Uncharted. I thought the demo was uninteresting. It was very pretty, but the, the design of it wasn't... The, the level that they started you out in wasn't very fun. It wasn't very compelling. It was it was, just, it was not interesting. And for some reason, I, I happened to pick up the actual game and start it from scratch after being disenchanted by the demo. And I fell in love with it, and I played the game the whole way through, so... There you go. Sometimes a demo will work against you. But yeah, as far as Scott Pilgrim goes, I'd say support the aesthetic, support the style, support the throwback. I'll probably pick up the game. Maybe you should do Do your homework. Um, what else can I say? So, this today is Wednesday, September 1st. In a couple of days, Friday the 3rd, I will be at the Penny Arcade Expo. Seattle, and that will be interesting because that will be the first time that I will be speaking publicly about this stuff. So that will be that will be very interesting. I'm going to be on a on a panel discussion with a couple of other people. Let's see, John Krajewski of Strange Loop Games, James Silva of Dish of Scott Studios. They made the Dishwasher game and a game called I Made a Game with Zombies in It, and of course Brian Mitsuda, who's recently announced his own game called Dead State. Uh, from his new production company called uh, Double Bear Productions. So that will be on uh, this Friday night, 6.30 to 7.30 in the evening at the Serpent Theater. So that we will all be discussing basically our experience in independent development. Um, we have a whole lot to say about that between where we've come from and what we intend to do, why we're doing independent, what we expect to get out of it, the pros, the cons, the pratfalls, the hoo-yahs, the ha-has. So, yeah, um, I will try to get a recording of that if I can. Uh, again, I'm still kind of new to that kind of things. I'm used to sitting, you know, in my desk and actually being the guy creating all the assets and not worried about being out there in the community and selling all the stuff firsthand. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, I guess that will wrap it up for this episode of Headcase Games Video Log. I promise I'll come up with a snappier title for this thing. Um... I put a, a tweet right before I started recording asking if anyone has any questions. So let's see if we got any questions on the Twitter. Do, do, do. Bear with me. I don't expect to have any, but you never know. Nope, nothing. Nobody cares. All right. I think everybody's just busy. And I also just sent the tweet out about 15 minutes ago anyway. So... Send me some questions next time. We will get we will get answers. The answers that you seek. The answers that you crave. Download my game. Download 180 for Headcase from Headcase Games. 180 from Headcase Games. 180 from Headcase Games. From Headcase Games. Okay, you get the point. It is uh, 180 on the App Store. What is 180.com? Headcasegames.com. You can find us on Twitter. Twitter.com slash headcasegames. We're on Facebook as well, all the usual places, headcasegames.com. I can say it eight or nine more times if you like, but I don't think you get the point, so I will just uh, 
uh, spam everybody's inbox, but it about me. I'm just kidding. Thank you for watching my uh, video log. I'll be back at you soon. Come out and check us out at the Serpent Theater at the Penny Arcade Expo. Goodbye.